one's children when the future is uncertain. The pandemic threatened everything, health, jobs, lifestyles. Bad times for offspring, expert warned us. Including on our show about a year ago. Natalie, will birth rates really fall? I'm sure there will be some lockdown babies born. That as a major trend to affect future fertility rates is extremely unlikely. And uh, I would say yes, birth rates are going to fall uh, at least in the next few years or in the next year. That was true in previous crises. In the wake of the global financial crisis, for example, far fewer children were born in the United States. Has the coronavirus shock now also triggered a global baby crisis? Or is the desire to have a child stronger than the virus in the long run? Hello and welcome to our COVID-19 special. I'm Monica Jones in Berlin and today we revisit a topic we've covered a few times in this pandemic and one that's crucial to our survival as a species, making babies. And here's the first surprise. While experts predicted a drop in birth rates here in Germany, We've seen a baby boom. Nearly 66,000 babies were born in March 2021, just as the third wave kicked in. Now, that's the highest March birth rate in 20 years. If we count back nine months, we see that those March 2021 babies were conceived in July 2020, just when the first lockdown measures were eased in Germany. For more, I'm joined by Natalie Nietzsche, Deputy Head of the Laboratory for Fertility and Wellbeing at the Max Planck Institute in Rostock. And we've been, talked about this topic before. Good to see you again. Uh, what do we know a year later? Well, that's the theme of this week's COVID-19 special. And the whole birth rate story certainly seems to be taking a different direction than expected. You certainly expected that birth rates will fall. And now we see a baby boom. What's changed? Yeah, hello. You're absolutely right. We're seeing a baby boom across many European countries right now. For the March birth, the data has just come out. But the story is quite dynamic. And I think in a way we were all right. <laughs> um, so the, the development of the birth rates across the countries that we have data from, which is mainly Europe, North America, and some Asian countries, is quite dynamic. And most countries have seen a baby bust during the birth months of, say, November to January, February. So the, the decline in the birth rate we predicted certainly arrived. But now there are many countries that have um, actually an increase. That's true. So, so basically, during uh, the lockdown periods, not much happened. Uh, sitting on top of each other doesn't seem to be conducive to romance, then. Well, during the lockdown periods, there were much fewer births conceived than would have been expected compared to the birth rate before. Pretty much across all Europe, besides perhaps Scandinavia and Germany, there were quite some declines. So, for example, South Europe, Spain, Italy, France, Portugal, they have seen drops in the birth rate of 10 to 15, 20 percent during these winter month births that would have been or were con uh, conceived during uh, during the first lockdown. And now the, the, the births that were postponed are catching up a little bit, but not, not in all countries. So, you know, um, what is funny about research on childbearing behavior is that we do know a lot about what happens as soon as we get the data, were there births, yes or no, but why? <laughs> That's often a different question and quite complex to answer. Romans okay, during lockdowns, but... yeah, good question, and I wish I had the answer. Um, but uh, there are first studies, well, we, can, we talked about that. We can... Yeah. We can we can we can try and and maybe second guess because what you said I mean uh, uh, there was a birth rate bust uh, certainly uh, in the months that were connected to the lockdowns and now the whole of Europe seems to experience higher birth rates this spring which means if you look back nine months that brings us to midsummer that's when Europe more or less opened up again as soon as the lockdowns were eased nine months later we see more babies is there a pattern. 
Absolutely. This is the pattern we know from crisis literature uh, in former times, a bust in conceptions and then following birth during crises and the catching up. So the births that were postponed will then happen and the conceptions a few months or years later, depending on when the crisis eases. Uh, what is interesting about this is that we really can go month by month and we can now follow how the waves and the easing of the lockdowns and the virus activity has kind of uh, affected the, the conceptions. Um, you know, what I wanted to say about the Romans during the lockdowns is quite interesting because demographers have, of course, speculated that the economic uncertainty that the crisis has brought would uh, lead people to postpone conceptions. And uh, first studies, we don't know much yet, but first studies indicate that really the emotional factors, stress, worries, mattered quite a bit for how people uh, made their plans about having a baby now or postponing. So those who were worried about the economic uncertainty uh, and ha who had relationship stresses, for example, first studies show that these people were the ones who did, did, um, postponed right. the, the, the baby making yeah. decision. Yeah. But, but now we've been through several waves uh, and we have all learned a lesson that uh, the end of one wave doesn't mean that the crisis is over, but that a next wave can be around the corner and maybe another one after that. What will be the result there for couples and their wish for having kids? Will they just get used to the crisis and say, well, let's go through with it anyway? Or will that put them off in the long run? Yeah, let's speculate a little bit here. I think we will see a variety of dynamics. Uh, first, partnering was disrupted. So I think uh, the, the partners that didn't find each other perhaps during the first lockdown, we will see these effects later in some declines. And I also expect the second wave to lead to baby busts again, specifically in the countries that didn't see the busts during the first wave conceptions like Germany, Netherlands, Scandinavia, I, because they were hit harder by the second wave. And I think this is still... Um, causing a bust later on. But I also think uh, many people are now vaccinated and we've seen that the virus is dangerous for everyone, but certainly the risk is concentrated in the older age groups. Uh, so perhaps couples will uh, not make their decision dependent so much anymore on their worries about the virus and health and so on in the future. All right, we have half a minute, so a short answer if you could. Uh, will the world population be bigger or smaller after this pandemic? Oh, well, temporarily it will shrink. Fertility falls, mortality was high, longevity was cut off for some people. Uh, but I think in the very long run, um, the longer trend dynamics we've seen, the fall in world fertility rates will probably continue and the pandemic may lead to temporary distortions, but perhaps not uh, long effects. All right, Natalie Nietzsche there, fertility expert at the Max Planck Institute in Rostock. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, clearly, a lot has changed since last year. For one, we have vaccines to help us fight the pandemic. And now we've passed the three billion mark worldwide. We're getting there. Now, we know there's an issue in some countries about pregnant women being vaccinated. But what about young mothers? Time for one of your questions. And over to Derek. Can I get a COVID-19 vaccine if I'm breastfeeding my baby? Getting a clear answer to this question has been an exercise in frustration for new mothers. And I totally get why, because authorities have kind of danced around the subject. Um, the CDC in the US, for example, says that because lactating women weren't part of studies, it can't make a concrete prediction on any effects that vaccination might have on mothers, uh, their milk, or their newborns. But the agency also adds that there are no indications that breast milk from vaccinated mothers poses a risk to their babies and, and that women therefore can receive a vaccine. So an answer that places the responsibility for making the decision squarely back on the shoulders of those women and the doctors who advise them. Uh, many experts expect a firmer official stance in the coming months as, as results from targeted studies roll in. But until then, um, here's a breakdown of what the data indicates so far. First of all, there's no evidence that vaccines harm breastfeeding mothers 
specifically and directly in any way, and a growing pile of evidence that they protect them from COVID-19 as effectively as they protect other people. Um, second, research into authorized messenger RNA vaccines hasn't found any traces of them in breast milk in lactating mothers. Um, there's less data on other types of vaccines, but experts say even if traces of vaccine did make it that far, they'd be broken down by a baby's digestive system when it swallows the milk. Um, what researchers are detecting in the breast milk of vaccinated mothers is a lot of antibodies to SARS-CoV-2, which isn't a surprise since mother's milk doesn't just nourish a baby, but it also plays a key role in, in protecting it from a range of potentially dangerous pathogens in the early crucial stages of development. Um, all in all, the evidence in favor of breastfeeding mothers receiving vaccines is growing stronger by the day, and a lot of experts now recommend it. But it still lacks a blanket seal of approval um, from major healthcare authorities. And of course, apart from being protected from a severe case of COVID-19, vaccination also opens the door to more activities. If you want to visit a bar or restaurant in Moscow, you need to get a QR code to prove you've been vaccinated. But only about 15% of the Russian capital citizens have been vaccinated, and many are hesitant to do so. And that's led to a new black market. Prosecutors say websites are offering fake QR codes. They don't come cheap, whereas vaccination is free. But with moves underway to extend the need for codes to shopping centers and public transit, demand is growing. And hopefully leading to more people getting vaccinated and not fake QR codes. That's uh, all for this edition of COVID-19 Special. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.